Welcome into the latest edition of LCPioneers.com Live, broadcasting on Facebook Live and archived on YouTube and on uh, Facebook. You can access the show four days a week, Tuesday through Friday, 1130 in the morning Pacific time, LCPioneers.com Live, presented by PioStream, uh, getting you in touch with our student athletes, coaches, alumni, and other members of the Lewis and Clark College community as we move into the summer and week 13 of our show. We appreciate you joining us today. Hi, everyone. I am Ryan Goff. I am the play-by-play -play voice and director of athletic communications for Lewis and Clark, the Pioneers. We are an NCAA Division III institution out of Portland, Oregon, uh, competing with 19 intercollegiate teams in the Northwest Conference against other institutions from throughout Northwest Oregon and the state of Washington. And our student athletes an opportunity to compete on a nationwide scale with over 430 institutions at the NCAA Division III level. Uh, Lewis and Clark also with a robust overseas study program, a chance for our student athletes to get experience uh, overseas as well in curriculum and elsewise as well. Uh, we are excited to bring in rising senior for football and track and field. Aiden Verba Hamilton will join us. Uh, he is a student of color and Aiden is going to give us a chance to have his voice on the topic of systemic racism um, and how education plays a role uh, in racism's history and certainly in its presence um, he's been an exceptional uh, student athlete for both the football and track and field program, a former LC's rookie of the year for a men's team. Um, he's excelled both in sports and music and really excited to have his voice on our show today. Uh, have him join us, talk about those topics. It's, uh, he's a guy who I'm excited to have back uh, in the future too, uh, hopefully on campus as we get everyone back to Lewis and Clark uh, sooner than later. Uh, let's invite you to get in touch with the show you can in the Facebook comments below. You can also email us whether you have a question for our guest today, Aiden Verba Hamilton, or a future guest if you have a suggestion on someone you would like to see on the show. We invite you to do that, sports at lclark.edu. You can also check us out on Twitter and Instagram at LC Pioneers, our handle on both. To mention the show is available as a playlist on YouTube. You go to youtube.com slash lcpios and now... This show, like I said, in its 13th week and something that we plan to continue doing, uh, we started our first show last day of March. And so you can check out all of our past shows 
on there. And uh, YouTube has really been a place where I've heard that a lot of people are watching the show. If you're not able to tune in live at 1130 a.m. Pacific time, an opportunity to still get a chance to uh, see what's going on uh, with the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash LCPios. You can subscribe to the channel as well. We've been announcing new recruits on lcpioneers.com and our latest group, the softball team, head coach Shauna Cyrus, who we just had on the show last week, uh, announcing her four new recruits who are coming in for the 2020-21 academic year. You can read about them. Uh, softball had a really strong start to their spring 2020 season before coronavirus, the pandemic cut the season short. So I'm excited to see how this new uh, quartet coming into the fold uh, will help impact their success. Uh, in the future. And so with that said, let's bring in our guests for today. Again, a rising senior for Lewis and Clark, both on the football and track and field teams, a former LC's Rookie of the Year on a men's team. We welcome in Aiden Verba Hamilton to the show. Aiden, appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, eager to have your voice today uh, on the topic of uh, systemic racism. Uh, one place to start, I think, is if you think about education of racism, uh, kind of describe your perspective on how the home kind of shapes what people learn early on about the topic of racism? First off, thank you for having me. Hello, guys. Um, uh, well, uh, systemic racism, to me, to my, my perspective on that is that a lot of it starts in the home. Um, it starts with what you're teaching your kids um, because they go out and, you know, reflect that onto the world. Um I have firsthand experience from that, and I'm not I'm I'm not white, um, but I will say that growing up in a Filipino household, there were some things said about you know African Americans and you know people. I, I'm I'm Filipino and black, but there were, there was things said about my heritage, and I completely turned a blind eye to it until I got older and I realized like oh you know. That was probably not right. Thing. That was probably not the right thing to say. Um, you know, there were Filipino people in my family that were saying, "Oh, he's that's a black person. You have to like carry. You have to tuck your person a little. You have to hold your bag a little tighter. You have to do that. You have to take precautions." And you know, it, it was like that type of stuff. Not only happens in other other people of colors' households, but it also happens, of course. Or not, of course, but it happens in you know you know white white households, and it, and that is taught from the start. Um, sometimes subconsciously, sometimes like purposefully, and I feel like both of, both of those should be checked um, and corrected because, like I said, it starts in the home, and it starts with with what you're teaching your children and how you're and how you're teaching them what morals are and what what virtues they should they should follow. Um, so yeah, that's my perspective. And as that education kind of moves into more of a formal realm, you know, you get into your elementary, middle school, high school, and even into college where you are now as a rising senior at Lewis and Clark, mm -hmm. um, how kind of do you think institutions um, impact the understanding, uh, impact the perception of, of race? Um, oh, I have a lot of things to say about this. Um, I feel like one, pro, one, one, one thing to recognize and point out is is that how like when things like this happen how are schools responding you know because at lc we have a small population of african-american students we're very unrepresented um even in the clubs we probably get the lowest amount of funding the uh um B bsu probably gets the low amount of funding um so I just feel like when a school approaches it the right way, then, you know, that's the start. But then when you get into the classroom, you you don't hear about history that we should have learned a long time ago. You don't hear about, you know, like the, the real things that were going on. There's a lot of forgotten history that hasn't been taught. And I feel like that's that in itself is racist just because we're secluding our own history. A lot of black people don't know their history. They, they don't know, they don't know um, where they come from and, and you know, um, dang. 
I have a lot to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I just feel like forgotten history and, you know, not taking the choice to teach that to even teach that to everyone is, is, is that in itself is racist. Um, yeah. There's a lot more other things that I can touch on, like, you know, underrepresented communities of in the school um, and how um, athletics is doing a great job with recruiting um, more POC and African-Americans. Um, Cause if you look at, you know, the basketball and the football team, um, I don't know about the baseball team, um, but I know that there's a, there, there's a lot more POC coming to the school. I know the football team has recruited a lot of POC and African-Americans this year. Um, and we're diver we're slowly diversifying, which is a good step. But you know, like I said, there's always room for, or there's always room for uh, improvement. Um, but I would like to see an improvement um, from from LC as an institution by teaching us, you know, history that hasn't been taught, and also taking a better approach to when things happen like this. Um, but yeah. That's my, those are my thoughts on it. He's Aiden Verba Hamilton joining us on lcpioneers.com live, rising senior for Lewis and Clark football and track and field. And in that first question, Aiden, you said something that was interesting to me. You talked about, you know, you're, you're taught certain things in a home and going out and figuring out how to add to your perception. And, and you talked about like, you know, your perception may have changed from what you're taught early on in your life. I'm curious, you know, how do platforms, whether it's social media or access um, to different percept, uh, perceptions of backgrounds because of how connected the world is with the internet? You're from a generation that never, it doesn't, has never not had the internet. I'm curious how, you know, people can choose to kind of change their perceptions, accessing resources that are, are widely available to them from your, pers for, uh, from your perspective. You'd be surprised, honestly, like people don't, realize that the my, my, my favorite thing to say about anything is that the resources are always out there for you to learn. You know, it's always out there for you to educate yourself and, you know, wield yourself and equip yourself with the right knowledge. I, I don't want to say right knowledge because I don't, you know, I don't want to like, but there, there, there is a wrong and right and racism is wrong. Um, but then again, like you a lot of people won't unlearn these things just because they're so far down the rabbit hole. I'm not saying that I'm giving up, but there are people that are out there that will not give up what they learned and try to unlearn. And that's what's, that's what's confusing to me about racism because it's like people think this is right and that's the right thing to do. You know, that that's, that's what's sick about it. And I, I really want to understand more about that and why people think it's the right thing to do um hmm damn i lost my train of thought um well can, can and, you well I, 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 no i i think that's actually a, a great point too you know it's, yeah there, there's the opportunity to choose um and and access resources i think that that's one thing from the perspective of a person like myself, you know, what's what I've definitely realized is, you know, there's a key difference between not being racist and being an anti racist and taking time to understand specifically the steps that me as a white man can do to understand uh, the, sp the specifics around the struggle for black Americans and black men. And I think that's, that's kind of part of this conversation that I like your, your words on is, is since, you know, George Floyd's death and the protests that happened out of you know his murder what the, the topic of systemic racism is, is more prevalent or at least is certainly top of mind uh, in this moment which you talked about you know we've seen it come top of mind before um i'm curious you know in your words specifically what is the struggle for black americans black men that maybe even differs from communities of color as a whole well, I'm going to take it back to the history piece. So we, as a, as a black man, as, as a black man and knowing, you know, in a community of, 
other other African Americans, we 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 don't know our our real history. You know, we learn about you know we learn about other people's histories and other people's cultures, but we don't learn too much about ours. So that 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 leaves us forgotten, and we are not recognized for our, our goods. But we but we actually we only get recognized for or we only um, are taught about you know slavery and and we 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 never mention police brutality so it's just forgotten and we continue to be we step outside and we continue to be targets for anyone um you know um that's 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 one thing of the black struggle like our our, our forgotten history we, we don't even know our history while others may may know more about theirs um another part of it is that we walk out we can walk outside and we don't know if we're gonna make it home we don't know if we're going to, you know, survive this day because we are actual targets. Um, we, you know, we are painted as something violent and that's, I feel like that's just what society has like looked at us, looked at us like is that we're, we're like violent people and we are, you know, we are, you know, belligerent and, you know, killing each other off but you know in those same communities you know the government pumps you know illegal substances and weapons back into those communities we instead of giving money they put the they give us things to you know self-destruct um that's one that's another part uh, another part is um in the institutions we are underrepresented there's a very small community at lc of African Americans, we are doing better. As from what I've from what I've seen and from what I've uh, experienced in these past couple of years, we're doing better to you know include our um, uh, African American students. But there's a lot of work to be done um, from you know from the administration um, because our students can only do so much without you know power without, you know, the higher ups, um, you know, taking, taking stance with us. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think, uh, Aiden, you know, that I was really listening there and uh, I think, you know, we talked about this on the show, you know, I am the host of the show because I run athletic communications. I'm a broadcaster. This is something that is always been a, a skill set of mine. And, and with that, you know, I may not be uh, a, a top tier leader, but certainly this is a place where uh, we plan to, to do a better job allowing uh, our platforms to have voices like yours be heard. And, and the reason why is I think this, that, that last comp, you know, that last set of comments you made, because, you know, I, I run the show in my bedroom in Salem, Oregon, and I'm producing it and I'm changing camera angles. And I just caught myself with my head down for about 90 seconds, just listening to what you're saying. And I think that what you just talked about uh, will be something that we'll play back uh, on the show at some point uh, to keep this conversation going. Uh, let's finish, you know, the topic with, with kind of what comes next. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world. Um, what do you, what do you think we should take away? How do you think we should move forward uh, as a society? Um, you know, as we move forward, we need to be doing things with intention. Um, and that comes from everybody. Um, uh, one example that keeps coming back to my mind is that we need to, the power of a dollar is very, very strong, you know, and we really need to think about putting our money into the right places. Um, what I'm what I'm referring to is putting your money into black owned and POC businesses um, because those communities need help and need need to be improved and the power of your dollar would help or your dollar would help that um, even even like you know considering like who we want next for president um, we need to consider where we put our money um, there because 
a lot of our restaurants and a lot of our businesses that we do daily business with, um, for example, Chick-fil-A, um, they, you know, donate their money to Donald Trump. Um, and I'm not, I'm not telling anybody to, you know, not vote for him, but you know, if you, if you, if you aren't, you should probably think about where you're putting your money. Um, because those next four years are going to be critical. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, you know, we have to do things with intention. Um, keep, you know, doing, doing the right things. Um, cause you know, right now we have an elevated sense of what we should be doing and what we are doing, but we need to continue that when, you know, this movement loses its, loses its, um, its steam. Um, so yeah, you got to do this every day and it can't be, it can't just be a right now thing. Um, yeah, just moving with intention. That's, that's, that's my number one thing for everyone to take away from even, you know, the topic of racism all the way down to COVID. Like you have to like keep doing these things in order to be, in order to move society into the right place and educating each other on what, you know, what's important and educating each other on what is right. Um, because like I said, racism is not right. Everything else you can do is probably better than racism. So let's keep doing that. <laughs> Aiden Verba Hamilton, our guest on lcpioneers.com live for Tuesday through Friday, 1130 live on Facebook and archive youtube.com slash lcpios. Uh, Aiden, uh, a teammate of yours a couple years back, Pete Lottie, had a senior day uh, moment that he shared talking about all of the non-football related talents that his teammates had. And he listed off a whole bunch and he talked about um, some of his teammates being uh, really strong in, in the music world. Um, you you have a pretty impressive path in, in terms of music. Can you can you give us some background? You know, How did this become... I'm assuming maybe a hobby to begin with, and now certainly uh, is something that's a passion and, and a, a way forward for you. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I started making music around the same time I started playing football. I was about seven. I actually uh, wrote my first rap um, when I was seven, and my mom found it in the uh, in the cupboard, and I got in trouble for it just because it was really obscene, and like I was like really into Fifty Cent. So, but uh. Yeah, I didn't start taking it seriously until I was about 19 when I was uh, living on my own, fresh out of high school. I was surf couch surfing, and I was like, dang, I should probably... I didn't even know if I was going to play football again, so I decided on taking music seriously. Um, this was when I was living in Long Beach, California, and I really just took a back seat and watched all the people that were doing it around me, and I just learn from them and then I decided I, I, I just got a little better at what I did what I was doing and I found a direction in it so I decided to do that um, but yeah like I said I've been writing music all my life but I didn't really take it seriously until about three or four years ago well and so, and so what's the evolution in terms of you know kind of where are you at now uh, with music and, and certainly what are your future goals with it um well my approach to everything in life is that I want to give everything the same energy. If that's even possible, if, even if it's, I, I like to say I'm giving a hundred percent to everything. So right now I'm doing pretty well in music. I've um, reached my first million streams, not two uh, two not about two months ago. Um, and now I'm looking more into you know looking into the business side of music because that's a really important part of the industry um and i just want to I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how to like tell my story and also keep it um keep it like relevant to what's going on today especially right now like i really want to like going forward i want to incorporate what's going on today in some of my music because I didn't do so much of that before and I want to do better with that. Um, because I feel like that's part of my story. I had, a, I had a really big awakening these past couple months with uh, my identity in the world. 
and music played a good part in that. Um, so yeah. Well, we wish you best of luck, uh, how that goes, uh, you know, in the coming months and certainly coming years. I, I uh, talked to you when we were discussing, uh, topics for the show, I meant to have some of your music ready to go for today. And I forgot to follow oh, up snap. with you on that. So we'll make yeah, sure to, to share some of that, uh, down the road, yeah. but Aiden, I uh, appreciate your time, your thoughts, uh, today and certainly look forward to having you back on a future episode for sure thank you ron that's aiden verba hamilton joining us on lcpioneers.com live uh yeah i i kind of uh i i haven't had a situation yet in a, in a long time um with interviewing you know where i've just been able to focus wholeheartedly into what someone was saying and and that just happened in, in this conversation with Aiden, um, yeah, most of my experiences as a broadcaster have always been uh, in some sort of role beyond just focusing from what they term in the industry as talent, right? Just being on the microphone and conducting an interview or doing just the play by play. Uh, historically, in smaller operations, you know, you're operating the mix, which would otherwise be uh, put on to someone in the technical arena. Um, you are listening for how good the call quality is, or in this case, monitoring how we're bringing in our guests on the show uh, that would otherwise be done by some sort of producer. Um, even uh, figuring out exactly what to ask, you know, that's a conversation between multiple people on uh, the top level. And all of that is done on a smaller level by yourself. And so below here is a keyboard that I use with, with shortcuts to change camera angles. And I have a mouse down here that I'm clicking different things. I got multiple windows open. And, and at one point, I just caught myself uh, off camera looking down and just fully immersing myself in what Aiden was talking about. Um, and that hasn't happened in a long time. And so uh, I'm going to splice out that comment for sure, because I think that that was, um, it was very impactful. Uh, we are planning to continue to have this show be an opportunity for our students' voices to be heard. And that certainly won't be limited only to members of our black student body, but it certainly right now uh, is something that needs to be prioritized in, in bringing their voices to the forefront. Um, even in a month right now uh, where LBGTQ um, concerns and uh, voices need to be heard too. You know, I haven't done a good enough job of bringing them to the forefront either. Um, and, uh, realizing that, uh, that's something that I have help to do in addition to just putting that burden on myself to make sure that I get the guest scheduled and things. Um, I appreciate everyone who's reached out to help that. So, uh, look forward to doing a better job in the future, uh, with that through the show and, and through the entire, uh, LC pioneers platform as well. Uh, Aiden Verba Hamilton, thanks so much for being our guest today, and big thanks to everyone who watched. Uh, tomorrow, we will continue the conversation um, with our ombuds person, Valerie White, will join us, and she has been a longtime member of the Lewis and Clark College community. Uh, she provides what I think is an entirely invaluable service to the community, students, faculty, staff, even in just reading about the ombuds office. Uh, it's something that's available to parents, and, and she is there to listen and be a neutral party uh, in uh, the, some of the struggles that you may be going with, uh, whether again, your parent, faculty, student, staff, um, she is there to listen. And uh, we are excited to have her share how she makes an impact on the Lewis and Clark College community. As always, all of our past shows available, youtube.com slash LCPios. Uh, not entirely sure what next week will look like, uh, which I don't have any guests on that panel, uh, that, that graphic quite yet for next week, because uh, we may not have any shows next week. We may have a couple of shows next week, um, but certainly always trying to get together a Tuesday through Friday lineup, 1130 Pacific time. So uh, until we talk to you again tomorrow uh, with Valerie, uh, big thanks again to Aiden Verba Hamilton and you for watching as well. I'm Ryan Goff. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon for more lcpioneers.com live on Facebook Live and archived on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash lcpios. Goodbye, everybody.
name Casey Jones and I teach a range of classes, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and also some advanced classes. And I have a research lab that currently I have four students working with me um, as part of the Rogers program. The summer experience is a way to get really deeply involved in the science that is here and be able to um, start to define what might be what you want to do next. So the brown bag gives our students a chance to explain their research and really show the context and the application of what they're doing to a very broad range of students and faculty. It's interesting to be able to communicate to other scientists what your work is and it forces you to learn how to talk about your subject so that not only experts in your field can understand it, but others can understand it as well, which I just believe is a good life skill. To talk about your research in a way that anybody can understand it really is a valuable experience, and it's something that you don't get a lot of practice for except in these contexts, because oftentimes you're giving a presentation to a classroom filled with people who know basically the same things that you do, but in a brown bag, you have to be able to um, explain and provide motivation for everything that you're working on and why it's important and why it's relevant to be studying.